Back in the day, bikes always had center stands, but there is now an ever-growing number of bikes that come equipped only with a side stand. Some have the option of fitting a center stand and some done. The Bobber, the Bobber Black and I believe the Speedmaster are all perfect examples of that. Now this doesn't seem like a big deal until it comes to doing some maintenance on your bike. Just the simple task of cleaning and lubricating your chain can be a major hassle without a sensor stand and I've been having to use my sealer jack for the past six months or so for that task. Now it's not the most convenient way of doing it but it's a damn sight more convenient than rolling your bike halfway down the drive and back again several times to clean and then loop your chain. And as soon as I got the bobber I immediately started looking for a paddock stand and that's where you hit the second problem. The Bobbers and the Speedmaster are very low bikes. They're outside of what would be considered to be the norm. Most paddock stands are universal. They're designed to fit a wide range of bikes. And because these Triumph twins are outside of that normal range, most paddock stands simply don't work with them. Now altogether I've tried three paddock stands, all really good high quality stands from reputable manufacturers and none of them worked. Even with my entire body weight on them, I could literally swing on them all day and the bike would not lift up. Now at first I thought it was just me, I thought I'd just been unlucky in selecting those that didn't work. But during that course of time, I've had emails, comments and contact on Facebook from people that are pulling the hair out because they can't find a paddock stand for the Speedmaster or their bobber. Now this video has actually been about five months in the making. And as I said last week, I have identified a stand that I think will work. I'm pretty sure it will work. It's from a reputable manufacturer. Unfortunately, it is a very popular stand. And they told me at the end of last week that they were out of stock and they weren't going to be able to supply me one for review until the end of March. Now, I do still intend doing that video. It'll probably be in April. But I needed a quick fix. I've had an X-pipe waiting to be fitted to the bobette for about six months. And I want to get on with that I can't do it with the jack it needs a paddock stand first of all bobbins the bobber has a lug pre-installed underneath the swing arm with an m8 thread designed to take a set of bobbins and these are what the paddock stand engages into in order to lift it now you can buy cheap bobbins for seven or eight pounds some of them are of questionable quality and remember you're relying on these to support the weight of your pride and joy so if you want to stick a cheap pair in that's up to you I decided to go for the RNG versions a name that I know and trust now there is a plastic plug inserted into this thread that needs to be removed before you can fit the bobbins I found that the thread on man was quite rusty that's something that you'll have to look at and gauge for yourself I just got my tap and die set out and clean those threads out before installing the bobbins screw them in securely and then we'll have a look at the paddock stand that I've selected for this video today Now, to satisfy some of the skin flints among you who are constantly complaining about the price of the products that I review, I have quite literally gone for the cheapest paddock stand I trust to do the job. And I have to say, I have one or two reservations about it, which I'll go into during the course of this review. Now, this particular one is the Ride Rear Paddock Stand. It's a generic design. Literally, dozens of companies sell what appears to be the same stand under their own name all over the internet. Now, I'll say this, and I'll say this only once. They may all look the same in the pictures, but when you start to investigate the fine print and read the reviews on them, you will find there are some slight differences. First of all, weight ratings. Many of them are only rated for 200 kilograms. Yet the reviews that I've read say that 
even lifting middleweight bikes they are too flexible and potentially dangerous the other problem is that there are slight differences in the actual measurements of the support arms and the lifting arms and I'll tell you now one centimeter difference can make the difference between a paddock stand that works and a paddock stand that you have to send back to the supplier so before leaving comments saying that you've found one that looks exactly the same for 10 pound or 15 pounds less please bear this in mind if you want to just go for the cheapest one that looks the same as this one and then trust it to support your £12,000 bike be my guest now this ride paddock stand I bought from Amazon it cost just over £41 including package and postage and it's rated for 317 kilograms it's made from aluminium and it is very lightweight now the description on Amazon say it has a packed weight of four and a half kilos to me it seems lighter than that but I have to admit I didn't actually weigh it so I don't know for certain I don't think it's powder coated to me it looks like it's just been wagged over with some satin black paint and that paint isn't very durable the slightest knock and it scratches that in itself isn't a deal breaker it's aluminium so corrosion shouldn't be a problem the kit you get consists of two support arms and one lifting arm and then you have a plastic bag with six nuts and bolts and your two support hooks the welding isn't the best I've ever seen but then again it's not the worst I've ever seen it seems pretty secure and it should be up to the job keep an eye on it now it does have a pair of very nice heavy-duty wheels in fact they seem far better quality than those that I've seen on much higher expensive models the jaws of the support arms do need to be prized open slightly in order to engage them onto the lifting arm and once you've got them in place it's just a matter of lining up your holes and putting your bolts through fasten them up nice and tight with the nuts provided but remember this is just sheet aluminium so don't go over the top once that's done it's time to loosen off the clamps on the top that hold the support hooks and this is where I encountered my first problem the manufacturer has been a bit slapdash in drilling and tapping the holes which has resulted in the clamps been slightly out of whack with the support arm this means that the threads are very tight because they're working against each other they may not all be the same but I have noticed this on illustrations that I've seen of this particular stand elsewhere so it may also be a common problem now again remember we're talking about steel bolts going into soft aluminium here there is the potential for those threads to strip bearing in mind that you're relying on those clamps to support your bike again I think this is something that you need to keep an eye on in general day-to-day -day use because I think if this stand is going to fail in any way that's where it's going to fail so loosen off your clamp bolts slightly and insert your support hooks they should be inserted with the longer prong of the hook facing forward and once you've got them in place offer them up to the bike and adjust them so that you've got a perfect fit in your bobbins Right, all being well, you should now be ready to lift your bike up on that paddock stand for the first time and I'll go through it with you. First of all, you need to get the bike as upright as it's safely possible to do. I found that an off cut of decking is perfect for this. Just put it underneath your side stand and then make sure that your handlebars are straight. You don't want to leave them at an angle, it may cause problems. Then offer your stand up to the bobbins on the bike. Insert the hook on the stand into the near side bobbin that's the same side as the side stand and make sure that your paddock stand is lined up parallel to your swing arm on both sides now what you'll notice here is that the offside bobbin hook will be some distance away from your actual bobbin and that's because the bike is still leaning slightly what I would recommend you do is steady the bike with your left hand this is simply to guide it by placing your left hand on the seat 
and start to put some firm downward pressure on the paddock stand. Now this will effectively make the bike sit up straight and it should engage the offside bobbin into the offside bobbin hook. Once both sides are engaged properly, you can then begin the lift and you'll probably need two hands for this. At this point, as long as you're putting a firm downward pressure on your paddock stand, your bike is perfectly safe. It can go anywhere, so don't worry about it. Quite a lot of force is initially required to start the bike moving upwards. Remember, this paddock stand is a compromise. It's not a perfect fit for this bike. But as the bike lifts, it will become progressively easier as you reach the sweet spot, if you like, the balancing point on the paddock stand. Now remember, as long as you keep that downward pressure on your paddock stand, your bike is perfectly safe. If you let go of it, it's not. Continue pushing the handle of your paddock stand all the way down until it contacts with the floor. Your bike is now safe and secure with the back wheel off the floor, ready to do whatever maintenance you need to do. There should be no need for a second person to help you, but the first time you do it, if you're not used to using a paddock stand, there's nothing wrong with having somebody nearby just for peace of mind. Now, I did notice with this paddock stand that it did interfere slightly with the number plate as I'm constantly getting told by the Americans and various other nationalities our number plates are ridiculously large if you don't live in the UK you probably won't have a problem and to be honest I think I may have been airing a little bit too much on the side of caution it possibly won't cause a problem but if any doubt just whip your number plate off it's two plastic bolts it takes a minute now taking the bike back off the paddock stand and returning it to its side stand is the exact opposite. But just bear in mind, when you lifted it, the bike will have moved back a few inches. So you may need to realign that piece of wood to make sure that the side stand contacts with it and doesn't miss it when you lower the bike back down again. Take it slowly, steady the bike with one hand and guide it over onto its left hand side to make sure that it drops down in the right direction. I know for people that have never used a paddock stand before, this whole operation does seem very daunting. But with the right stand, hopefully with the help of this video and a little practice, it soon becomes second nature. Now, as for this paddock stand, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. This is just over half the price of what you'd normally expect to pay for a good paddock stand. It does have some flaws, it's not perfect but I certainly think it will give you several years of use. Just check it or inspect it regularly for any signs of stress or any signs that indicate it may be about to fail. I will leave a link for it in the video description down below as usual. I'll also leave a link for those RNG bobbins if I can find one. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. I will be back next week as usual. So until then, Ride safely, watch your toes, and I'll see you soon.